So hey YouTube, here's a quick little secure tunnel demo using Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9.0. Let's get started. So this is going to be a quick little secure tunnel demo between two Raspberry Pi computers uh, running Red, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9.0. Uh, so what we're going to do is show you how to set up the Linux firewall, uh, SE Linux, configure and establish the secure tunnel. And then we're going to use a unsecure application to go send traffic successfully across the tunnel. And for that we're going to use the Telnet client and Telnet server. So let's jump right into the demo. We have two terminal windows accessing each host. The top window is the Telnet S-Tunnel server, and the bottom window is acting as the Telnet S-Tunnel client. Both are running RHEL 9.0 on Raspberry Pi 4s. So here you can see we're running RHEL 9.0, and that's using a 5.14 kernel um, that happens to be on ARM Arch 64. So before we get started, we're gonna install the following packages. Uh, S-Tunnel, Telnet Server, and Telnet, um, but since we've already done that, we can omit that step. We also have the firewall enabled, so you can see that it's running. We've actually opened up TCP port 450 already. and that port was opened up using the following command but we don't need to set that again so SE Linux is also enabled and it's set to enforcing mode we've also uh, added TCP port 450 and that was added using the following command but again we don't need to set that because it's already enabled so next we created a self-signed certificate we already created one called S tunnel but uh, let's go ahead just to show you how to do it. We'll, call, we'll create one called example. Uh, so it's a series of commands that you have to uh, enable. Um, and the important piece here is that for the common name, you cr set the correct um, host name or IP address as shown here. Um, in my case, it's sconish-pi1. So of course you have to copy it to the right location and make sure the permissions are set properly. Okay, next we populated the Telnet server configuration file. And you'll notice we've got it set to TLS 1.2. We're also setting it to the appropriate certificate and we also have it set to accept on port 450 and connect on port 23. Okay, next we can go over the S-Tunnel configuration. So for that we have to copy the file to the Etsy system D system location. And then we're gonna go ahead and open it up and add two lines to it. Okay, that's the default file that we're showing. Um, and 
we're going to go ahead and add two lines. Let's go ahead and edit it. Okay, so that what goes ahead and uh, creates a directory and sets the ownership. Um, but we're going to go ahead and override that currently with the same commands um, just to go ahead and create that folder and set the ownership. So let's go ahead and create that directory using make dir and let's go ahead and set the ownership using the chown command. As you can see I already created it previously but this is the command to type and then of course you set the ownership and the last step is to actually go in and enable the services with system CTL. Okay, so everything is configured on the server side. We can now move on to the client. So on the client side, the first thing we would do is normally add a few packages uh, using the DNF command. Uh, this, is, this is the command I used. Obviously these packages are already installed so we don't need to run that again. So the next thing you want to do is copy that self-signed cert over to the client host. And the next thing we want to do is look at the Telnet configuration on the client side. You can see that we have it set to the same SSL version. We've got debug level turned up. We're going to accept on port 450, sending out to IP address.9, which is that of the server. Now we can go ahead and enable the service on the client side. And the last thing is to just go ahead and try Telnet. Now here we're going to try and Telnet to the local host, uh, which will send it out the tunnel. And there we are, we're connected, voila. Now it's important that this, this won't always work the first time if you don't set everything correctly. So you need to know that uh, the journal command um, to uh, will help you um, actually you know, capture the output. And here we have a successful output but um, when you first do this uh, your first time you may see an error or two just because you missed a step. And that's all we have. Thanks. So that concludes this demonstration. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.